Hey, we've got a little more sun. It's time for part two of our gardening Q&A. So let's get right into it. Uh, have you ever used a green stock container? And what's your opinion of it? You know what? I think I'm the only garden YouTuber that has never been sent a green stock container. And that makes me a little sad. I don't know, they look cool. They, they look cool. They look like something that might be great for strawberries, lettuces. Um, if you had one and you like it, hate it, whatever, let us know in the comments. Have you ever tried electroculture? This has been a new and rather intriguing concept for me. I'm still fairly new to your channel, so my apologies if you've already discussed this in a previous video. So interestingly enough, I had never even heard of it. And uh, until about two weeks ago, this question came along at a really interesting time. And just so you know, I've closed the blinds here, so I cannot watch the birds right now. Um, so I, like I said, I've never heard of it, but every day we get emails from companies who want us to promote their products. And out of all those emails, we, as you know, we partner with very few. Um, I mean, a, a handful over the last several years. This is the company that had contacted us and they sent us their product. Uh, it's still in the box. We just got it a couple days ago, but I will be trying it and I will be doing a test because I only represent products that work and that I love. And so uh, I will do a specific section with it and a specific section without it growing the exact same things and we'll see if it works. Basically what it is, for those of you who haven't heard of it, like I had a few weeks ago, it's electro electrodes basically that go into the ground and are supposed to stimulate the roots. And I mean, it sounds completely hokey, but apparently there's scientific studies that say that it does improve your grow, your production. So we will see and I will let you know. Well, how's that? For the first two questions, I have zero answers. All right, how likely can I grow veggies in garden clay soil if I mend it with a bunch of kitchen scraps then plant in that soil? You know, clay soil gets a lot of um, negative press, but in my opinion, it's one of the best soils you can have if you amend it. Clay soil holds on to moisture, it holds on to nutrients. You know, if you can amend it with gypsum, with composting, um, it's gonna really perform for you. We have a mixture here of uh, clay and decomposed granite. Now in most of the areas, especially once it's been amended, the clay and the decomposed granite is kind of mixed together. So you have the water holding and the nutrient holding capabilities of the clay, and you've got the drainage of the decomposed granite. Now there are certain sections that I will find a slab of clay, and I have to break that up. But if you've got clay and you can amend it, it's good. It's, it's, I think it's best, second best, only to a really good loamy soil, which is probably the most rare. Would you be willing to do an experiment with two beds, no dig Charles Dowding style and traditional dig to do a running comparison with your soil type and climate? I would love to see the comparison and result each season. Uh, I would try it probably one season. I already do no dig pretty much, um, even though some of it is in raised beds. I, I watch Charles Downing and he amazes me with the record keeping that he has. I'm just, I don't, maybe it's my ADHD or something, but I just can't even fathom going from year to year, weighing every single thing I take out of my garden. That's just not me. But it would be interesting to see here, as opposed to in England, um, what the two side-by-sides would be for at least one season. So let me give that some thought and I'll get back to you on it. Were you able to replant your blood leaf? That blood leaf. Doreen's talking about a plant that I had at the last house. It probably got more comments than anything else I grew. It, it was in the background of a lot of videos and every time it was in the background, I had comment after comment. What is that red plant? What is that red plant? And it probably got the most comments other than the uh, Brugmansia that was growing over it. 
I brought some cuttings to this house, but like a lot of the cuttings I brought to this house when we moved, we had a really horrible move, moving experience. And it was 100 degrees and dry when we moved. And so most of the cuttings died, including the blood leaf. However, getting started with my tropical garden this year, and I will definitely be finding some blood leaf somewhere to put in it. And the scientific name for that Latin name is Irisine herbstii, unless in case anybody wants to try that out yourself. And I think you should. My raised bed allows only one row of tomatoes. I want to do your trellis system and move the tops. If I have six plants and I move one to spot two, two to spot three, where does plant six go to? Um, so in my original trellising method, using the hooks that we sell on our website, um, and I know lots of you had great success, but yes, if you only have one row, what do you do? It can't go around and around. And I'm gonna be doing a video on this, hang on. So right now it's scheduled for Sunday. So if the rain does what it's supposed to do, um, oh, that's tomorrow, right? This is Saturday. So tomorrow's video is going to be on this exact subject. And I did try uh, a different method, similar method, but if you only have one row, there will be an answer for you on that video. If you have two rows, and have no, or if you have no idea what we're talking about, watch tomorrow's video. It's going to double maybe even quadruple your tomato harvest. What is the best, cheapest seed starting mix? I want to sell plants at the farmer's market, but seed starting mix can get expensive. Right now I'm doing a mixture of coconut core, uh, peat moss, and perlite, sometimes adding humic acid and azomite. Um, I mean, what you're doing, you can keep doing that. I wouldn't add the uh, humic acid and azomite, I think that's too much, too many nutrients that just isn't needed in something small that someone's gonna put into their garden as a transplant. So taking that out should save some money. And it usually is cheaper to make your own, so you're doing all the right stuff. How has your zucchini trellising changed over time? Is it the same that it was when you created the video at the old home? Uh, I haven't done it at this house mainly because the number one reason to use that method is for space saving, and now I have more space. However, I will be doing a new updated video from this house on it this year, so I will be doing that, but I don't think I'm gonna change anything because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What kind of camera and editing software do you use for your videos? Do you do the editing on a laptop? Do you use your cell phone camera in addition to another camera? Um, I have gone back and forth between my cell phone and a Canon M30. And uh, now I kind of use both depending on the situation. So right now I'm using my cell phone. I just happen to think cell phones have gotten so advanced with their cameras that they do almost a better job than a digital like a DSLR type of camera. And so I'll use the, the Canon for shots that are like let's say on my Homestead channel where I'm stuck away or something that's gonna go a long time because the memory card is bigger than on the cell phone. Uh, but a face-to-face -face type of stuff, if I'm doing tours around, I use my cell phone because I just think it gives a better picture. As far as editing is concerned, I use DaVinci Pro on my laptop. I still haven't hired an editor yet. I keep saying I'm going to and we'll see. Okay, this question has come up a lot and so I have to answer it now. I might still do a video on it but it's drip tape versus drip hose or drip tube. Your thoughts. Um, I had several of this question just in my, you know, putting out a post asking for questions, but I get it all the time. So last year when I set up my vegetable garden, I tried drip tape for the first time and I told you that I would let you know the results as far as if I like that better or worse than drip tube, which I've used for years. I so badly wanted to love the drip tape. It was, it was very easy to set up, except that pe there's not a lot of people who, or a lot of companies who sell it. And I was kind of mixing and matching parts based, based on where I could find them. And it was so easy to set up. I'm like, man, this is gonna be amazing. And then I turned it on and there were leaks everywhere. 
because you have to get certain parts that match the same parts. And I, I looked everywhere and I still, I had to Mickey Mouse some things with like those, those little screw clamps that tighten around a hose when you turn the screw. And those are expensive, especially for how many I needed. And they're already starting to rust. Then there was the, uh, the um, issue of coverage. And I don't believe it had enough coverage as the drip tube did. Now, that could be because the, the spacing of the drip emitters on the tape, I believe, were either 8 or 12 inches, or 10 inches, one of those, whereas the tr drip tube was every 6 inches. And so I probably should have put maybe double the amount of drip tape going down the rows um, because I had a horrible time watering at the beginning of last season. And then I put on mulch, and then it got better. So I'm not going to replace it yet. I'm going to try it. For another summer, um, I might regret that, but it was a lot of money to, to spend on something to just rip it out the next year. So I'm going to try it again and with the mulch and see what happens. However, if I were to go back in time, knowing what I know now, I would have stuck with the drip tube. I would like to know anybody out there who's tried both, what your thoughts are. Hey, Brian, I just love your videos so much, though I've only been watching for a couple of months. That's okay. I'm glad you're here. I feel like this will be my a better year for growing my tomatoes. I wanted to know how you feel about growing grapes here in coastal southern Georgia. The thing about grapes is you can grow grapes in a lot of places. It doesn't just have to be like here we have a Mediterranean climate. Great for grapes, but it doesn't have to be. And there are grape varieties that do well in many areas. Now I'm thinking coastal southern Georgia, you're going to have a pretty mild winter climate, right? And uh, you probably have the humidity. So I would look, either go to your local garden center or do some research on Google and find out good grape varieties for your area and give them a try. Please give me a solution besides not growing zucchini to at least control squash bugs and vine borers. So I have a video on that and lots of people have used that video and told me it worked. Uh, several things in that video that they've tried. I have a few companion planting ideas in my book, but really, I mean, the only 100% way is to cover them up with row covers or tool because that's the only way you're going to keep them out of there. And that's only if they haven't burrowed in the soil from the year before, then that could also be an issue. But that's the only way to keep them out 100%. Um, but go watch that video. There are several ideas and, you know, try them and let me know if one works for you. If, if one of you guys out there have a, a good idea, let us know in the comments. How do you manage or support the new canes among the previous year's canes on blackberries during the growing season? So, yeah, like most blackberries will bloom on one-year-old wood. So you kind of have to know what is the wood that grew last year versus what is the wood that grew this, this year. I have a, a, a video on supporting and, and pruning blackberries. It kind of goes into that. But I would leave my blackberry, the new year, this year's wood, to just flop. And then after the summer was over, I would tie it up. And you can kind of tell at that point the two colors of the wood. The older wood looks woodier. But if you really want a foolproof method, get yourself some colored ties, diff two different colored ties, and just swap every year the colors. And you'll know the pink ties are last year, so they're going to get chopped out this year, and the blue ties are you know, this coming year, so I'm going to keep those. Hi. All right. All right, Boomer wants to join me for the last question. Come here, bud. Say hello. So... What advice would you give to new gardeners? What should they do to build confidence and what should they do to avoid or be cautious of? Do you have an answer? Hmm? <laughs> okay, so first of all, to build confidence, start small. Don't go into a 40 by 40 square foot garden the first year. Start small and then expand as you get more confidence. And you just naturally will get more confidence. I would watch more of my videos or somebody else's. Uh, never stop learning, ever. I've been doing this for over 30, what, 35 years now maybe? And I 
still constantly read books, watch videos, and I'm learning all the time. What should they be cautious of? Nothing. Absolutely. You're done with me? Okay. No, you're not? Okay. Don't be cautious. You know, I mean, be cautious on some of the rules, but I want you to just know that gardening is a, it, there's so much more to gardening than the final harvest, that final tomato, that final cucumber. There's more to gardening than that. I, even if I didn't harvest anything, I can't say that, <laughs> but of course the harvest is great. But I get stress relief. It's a solace to be out there. It's, it's just healing. It's good for you. It's exercise. Having your hands in the bare earth. Science has proven that that is actually good for more than just stress. It's good for your physical health. Experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment with something you've never done. What's the worst that could happen? The plant dies? You're not going to die. Have fun, enjoy the process, and it is a process. I still make mistakes. I still have bad years. Look at last year. I about killed my whole garden putting salty compost in there. I didn't know that was a thing. You know, I moved here. I'm dealing with all kinds of new pests. The gophers are maddening, I will tell you. I want to pull my hair out and scream every other day. However... I am, it is getting better. I got the barn cats, I'm trying different traps, lots of different things that I'm doing because I know that one day there will be less. There will probably never be no gophers, but there will be less. Know every year that this will be your best gardening year ever and know every year that you will know more than you did the previous year and never ever quit. That is my advice for new gardeners and old gardeners. But old gardeners probably already know all that. All right, that's it, guys. That's the questions. And I will see you next time.